Hi, I'm here with another pool update and we had another excellent day here. It was just raining before and, well, as you can see, it was raining. And um, I'm going to talk about heat pumps because heat pumps are rather interesting. I've done, of course, videos on uh, my hot water system heat pump. But this is a pool heat pump. Works exactly uh, the same way. So I won't go over that. But in regards to their pool implementation, they are very interesting. And if you don't set them up correctly and calibrate them, um, they're going to work very poorly or not at all. So I've got the Maddie Mac Elite uh, V3 here. It's an Australian made uh, jobby and you can see we've got the um, inlet. Uh, sorry it's blowing a gale here at the moment. <laughs> it's coming out here. I've got it on 100%. Uh, we've got the inlet pipe coming in here of course from the uh, pool pump here. It comes in and it goes through the heat pump and it comes out. And you might think it's that easy and these you might think are a bypass thing in case you ever want to service this thing and that is true these are bypass valves so if you ever want to um, you know work on this thing you just bypass that and the water just comes in and goes straight back out okay no worries but there's actually more to it than that and it's very interesting so let's have a look at this Maddie Mac here it's operating at a hundred percent there as you can see it, the inlet temperature is 27 degrees and the outlet temperature is 30 degrees. And the, uh, so it's working at 100% maximum at the moment. And I've currently got the output uh, temperature set to 32. I wouldn't normally have it that hot, okay? Normally 27 or something like that is a nice temperature. That's what we've had it at today. And we've been swimming in that and it's been lovely. But I've just set that a uh, higher temperature so that I can have it running. So I can explain what's happening here. There's a three degree C differential here between the inlet temperature and the outlet temperature and I've deliberately calibrated this so that that's the case because heat pumps actually like this one and all heat pumps they will have a very narrow window of water flow rate that they actually operate with the most efficiency at. And this Manimac V3 is, uh, that range is 60 litres of water per minute, plus minus 20%. So it's quite a narrow range. And if you see my previous video, 60 litres per minute, that's actually very, very low. Because my pump in here is a uh, fixed speed, 360 litres per minute, pump so it's six times the water flow of what this heat pump expects so if you just install this heat pump that it expects to opt to work around that 60 liters per minute and you pump six times the water six times faster you're going to end up with and i've and i've tried it when i first installed it with almost no differential temperature i.e doesn't matter how much energy you put into this thing this is an 11 kilowatt inverter by the way it's a heat pump and it has a coefficient of performance up to 16.2 uh, uh, um, but that all depends on all the conditions and everything else okay the inlet temperature the ambient temperature and all sorts of stuff okay but its optimum flow rate is around 60 liters per minute so if you put uh, if, so if you pump water through it too fast, because this doesn't have a water pump in it, it's got to rely on that external water pump to push water through. This just uh, does the heat pump action and heats up uh, the water. So if the water flow is too fast, then you're not going to get efficient coupling or almost any coupling in this particular case. If you put six times the, the ideal water flow through it, it'll try and work but you won't get anything. So um, with six times the water rate, and before I actually calibrated this thing, I was getting like at most a half a degree C outlet temperature differential. So even pumping 100%, 11 kilowatts heat pump power into this thing, it was only heating the water up, the water that was flowing through it by like half a degree tops and like it was absolutely hopeless. So the way you actually calibrate these is either you have a variable speed pump and you set your variable speed pump to match the optimum flow rate efficiency of the heat pump over here which is 60 litres per minute. So you would have to slow that one down a lot but this is a fixed speed pump and that's not a problem because if we go back to the valves over here these are not just for uh, bypassing okay these are not just for service bypassing these are actually now calibrated what I had to do is adjust these so that 
uh, one si only one six and so here's the inlet water flows in here the pumps pushing it through here so that only one six of the water comes into the heat pump over here and five six of it is going up here and bypassing the heat pump like that and then when you do that if I actually, I, I won't do it now because I've already got it calibrated, but if I even tweak these, these have got little notches on them and you can turn them just by a tiny amount. And I only have to turn the tiny amount and within seconds, um, you can actually see the differential temperature change. It's gone up to uh, three, three and a half degrees uh, Celsius differential. Now, it doesn't have to be three, but the recommend, so the recommended conditions for this Maddie Mac heat pump are 60 litres per minute plus minus 20 percent and a two to three degree differential temperature anything you can set up to a maximum you can tell um, it can work up to a maximum of seven degrees c differential in there but you drop the efficiency of your heat pump system so they recommend but anywhere between two to three degrees Celsius temperature differential. So what you do is you set it to 100% pump power like this, you let it uh, go, and then you um, set your pump to whatever speed you want your pump, and then you have to dial in these to the exact setting so that uh, you get a three degree C differential or the temperature differential you want. I've chosen three degrees, they're recommended is two to three. So I chose three, but it could be up to seven. It could be, it could be uh, lower, but why would you? And um, yeah, so the uh, water being pumped out of this thing that's coming out of the heat pump is only three degrees C higher. Now you might be thinking that, well, why would you use a faster pump? Like a fixed speed pump like this, just get a variable speed pump. Wouldn't that fix all of your problems? And well, yeah, it fixes it in that you wouldn't have to calibrate over here, okay? You, you, you wouldn't have to tweak these at all. You just open them fully and just let the pump do the 60 litres uh, per minute optimum rate here. But even then, you, you do want the ability to dial in. Um, so, well, so you could change the variable speed pump so that you could change the temperature differential there. <clears throat> and uh, that's fine and dandy. But then, say in winter time, when you'd, you know, because we're probably not going to use this pool in the absolute dead of winter. This heat pump's just not big enough, uh, really, at 11 kilowatts for this 35,000 um, square, uh, 35,000 litre pool. It's just not big enough. So uh, then, you want a faster, generally, a faster pump like this to then, if you're not using a heat, heat pump, you want a faster pump to actually. A re um, to pump around your pool so that your skimmer over there it's behind that shark and yes that is a Millennium Falcon over there um, so you want the pump to be fast enough so it's changing over the water quick enough so that uh, it so that all the leaves go into the skimmer and the skimmer box uh, works so you so you want all that so it's a bit of a trade-off so sure you can have the variable speed pump and you just increase it in winter and that's fine and dandy but then it does upset the calibration of your heat pump. So it's like six of one, half a dozen of the other. You know, how it depends on how you want to maintain and what maintain your system and what operational modes you actually want. So really, you know, there's these huge trade-off really with uh, these heat pump uh, type systems. But and the flow rate, but just be aware that it's not just this Maddie Mac one, they're all going to be like this. All heat pumps will have an optimum flow water flow rate, and it's a fairly small window. As I said, 60 litres per minute, plus minus 20%. That's not much. Um, and a two to three degrees C differential. And if you're not within that, then you're just pissing away the power uh, going into this thing, trying to heat the water, and it's not going to be efficient at all so yeah when i took this thing out of the box i plugged it in i said i was wondering why i was only getting half a degree or no no temperature differential even though it was at 100 percent maximum 11 kilowatts heat pump power um it wasn't heating up the water at all but you can't just set a you know i can't just like pump that up to ha pun intended get it pump it up i'm here all week uh you can't just start uh, pump that right up to uh like an outlet temperature of like a seven degrees differential or something it's not going to be as efficient it'll try and do it 
but the heat pump won't be the heat pump action won't be as efficient so believe it or not even the biggest heat pump available in the Maddie Mac range the 40 kilowatt heat pump actually cannot handle that uh, you know relatively small pump i've got in there 360 liters per minute it can't handle that it's like under 300 i think liters per minute 260 or something liters uh per minute so even if i had the 40 kilowatt the biggest baddest ass model they got i would still have to adjust the flow rate for that uh 360 liter uh per minute pump <laughs> incredible but you know heat pumps they can they, they're only magic to a certain within a certain operational window that's where they're most efficient so they're only the most efficient within a very narrow window of uh flow rate you have it uh, too slow it's not going to be efficient you have it too fast it's not going to be efficient and if you have too much of a temperature differential on there uh, it's not going to be efficient either so yeah very optimal window these things unbelievable anyway there you go um heat pumps really interesting uh, uh things but you do have to actually set them and calibrate them uh, right for a particular flow rate so we've got a fixed uh, pump like this which isn't a problem it just uh, diverts one si it only heats one sixth of the water and you might think okay it's going to take forever to heat this pool well if you have your variable speed pump at uh, one at 60 liters per minute variable speed okay the water coming out of your jets out here okay it might be uh, yeah, it, you know, it's going to be uh, hotter, but it's going to be much slower. It's going to be slower. So it, either way you run the numbers, um, either one, because uh, only currently only one sixth of the water that's being pumped through this uh, whole pool is actually being heated. One sixth of it due to these valves and the calibration. But there's a massive flow rate so there's no real advantage to be had or you know if assuming everything's ideal and your loss rate of your you know evaporative uh, loss and all sorts of other things uh, if you don't take those into account you know it all comes out in the wash so yeah heat pumps um absolutely fascinating and they have to be dialed in just right <laughs> so if you ever see a pool that has heat pumps um yeah don't dick around with these because these are in a calibrated position so yeah there you go i hope you found that uh interesting and you can see it's still a three and a half degree c differential there but uh, i don't need to heat that up anymore but anyway you can do the calculations of you know based on the water flow rate and zero loss of course um because <laughs> you know spherical cows uh yeah so you just assume a spherical cow you assume no loss and you can work out how long it's going to take to actually heat up a pool uh, by a certain amount based on you know 35,000 litres uh, divided by I think it's like 10 hours or something for a full cycle change or something like that based at that flow of, of the heat based at that flow rate anyway don't quote me on those numbers but you can just run the numbers 35,000 litres at uh, 60 litres per minute that's actually being hot and then uh, 300 litres of that is not being heated at all it's just going through the bypass <laughs> there and you might think that's wasted but it's not as i said there's not a huge amount extra in terms of like heating ability to be had by having a variable speed pump to match your heat pump in that particular application because your water flow rate's one six okay you're heating 100 percent of your water at one six the flow rate so it doesn't matter whether you heat one six of the water at six times the flow rate or 100 percent of the water at one six the flow rate if you know what i mean <laughs> so there you go they're more complicated than you think uh heat pumps so hope you found that interesting if you did give it a big thumbs up and as always discuss down below catch you next time